One of the first AFN troops responsible for AFRTS radio and TV service in the Balkans was not a broadcaster, but an engineer. I was the first AFN member to go down to Croatia. There was an airstrip in Zagreb, Croatia, and four of us went down and put an initial installation of a huge satellite dish, and it happened to be finished on Thanksgiving of 92. Former Air Force Staff Sergeant Gary Von Houten worked out of a radio military van providing a radio and television downlink from AFN headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany to U.S. troops assigned to the MASH hospital in Zagreb, Croatia in December 1992. At that time, the U.S. mission in the Balkans fell mostly under the United Nations. Less than a year later, the U.S. expanded its Balkan role. The 3rd Infantry Division set up the first observation posts and foot patrols headquartered out of Camp Abel Century in Skopje, Macedonia. So AFN radio and TV service expanded to include service there as well. Basically, it entailed a lot of pre-planning and execution on behalf of the logistics office here and the uh, engineering shop with the uh, consistency guys that were downrange. The Balkan station was one of the first military units deployed to Bosnia as part of the implementation force following the Dayton Peace Accord, which ended more than three years of civil war and genocide in the Balkans. Eventually, AFN would expand to provide radio and TV in more than five Balkan countries, providing services to more than 100,000 troops. 655 and rock in the box, AFN Balkans, the Wallflowers, one head of light from 1997. Good morning, I'm Army Sergeant Hank Manitrez. Sergeant Hank Manitrez became the first broadcaster to sign on AFN Balkans, which became known as the most heavily armed radio station in the world. The live on-site American Forces Network radio and television service outlet signed on January 6, 1996 from the edge of Eagle Base in Tuzla, Bosnia. I remember landing in Tuzla. I saw all the mud, the barbed wire, and people in Kevlar and flak vests on post. And it was kind of it was eye-opening at first. It really was to go from AIT straight to here. AFN Balkans routinely rocked the box, providing radio and TV service to peacekeeping troops assigned to Albania, Bosnia, Croatia, Hungary, Kosovo, and Macedonia during its six-year on-site presence. I think broadcasters, there really made a difference. It was one of the few assignments, one of the few times where I've actually felt like I was really, really touching people and helping them. AFN visibility in the community included doing a top 10 with David Letterman, live radar remotes, and even radio giveaways at the Red Cross Trivia Night, all designed to encourage troops to tune in for the latest news, information, and entertainment. The radio station also tailored its music programming now and then to cater to the ever-changing demographics of its listeners. The audience in the Balkans is probably uh, the most diverse you'll find anywhere, and it's kind of hard to talk about your audience because in a, in a deployment like that, people keep coming in and out. So you don't really have the same audience, uh, maybe for a couple months, and then it's a completely new audience. The radio audience was probably the most receptive audience I've ever come across. You know, everybody just really banded together. They really enjoyed listening to radio every day. There were definitely people who called us, not just from Eagle Base, but, but you know, from Kosovo, from Pristina, every single day, and it just really, really let you know that you were there doing a good job. However, the spring of 2002 marked an end of an era for AFN Balkans when the last live radio show was aired on April 19th. Sergeant First Class Lee Donahue was one of the last station commanders in the Balkans. Their biggest concern was that they were going to lose all of their radio and TV, and they didn't, and they wouldn't. Uh, basically, they wanted to make sure they could still tune into the radio and hear their favorite songs, that they could still get their TV news fix and be able to watch all their favorite sporting events on TV. And we ensured that they would get the same service, even if it was provided from a different location. Although AFN radio and television service continues in the Balkan region, the closing of the AFN station with its live radio show still had an impact on many people in the community. It's one, been wonderful to have AFN Balkans here and, and to have the local broadcast coming in on the radio into the office and hearing, you know, just what's going on on the, on the installation. AFN Balkans also helped the American Red Cross get out life-saving messages to people in the region who were not easily accessible. What we did have ha happen that we used the radio for is we had an emergency on post with a civilian who had received a prescription that it turned out, once the civilian had left, that it was something he was allergic to. And so there was a desperate need to get a hold of the civilian and stop him from taking the medication, uh, otherwise it would have been a fatal uh, dose. 
and between AFN and us being able to call out uh, by a convergence, we were able to, to locate him in time. The Morale, Recreation and Welfare Office also had close ties with the AFN Balkan Station. Broadcasters advertised and covered many of the events hosted by both the MWR and USO. You go back to history and you see that where, where, wherever they, the soldiers go, where the airmen, the Marines go, you always have, you know, AFN, they're always there with them. It's, they go, it goes hand in hand. It's part of the, the morale, the welfare of the soldiers as well. AFN Balkans also made a lasting impression on many of the broadcasters that served in Bosnia. For some, it was a chance to see the immediate effect that live radio programming had on deployed service members. We did make a difference. Uh, some of the people telling their stories or even having a radio to listen to or something like that. I think it's more important down here because we talk about stuff that uh, really, like when you're in Germany or Italy, you really don't talk about. Danger, UXO. Do you have to read past the word danger? It's a minefield, buddy. Common sense. Why do you think it's roped off? Really, I wouldn't trade the memories for anything. It was the best time, really, that, I, that I've had in the military. Also getting to meet a lot of people from all over the world that uh, felt really good about what, what they were doing while they were there and, and kind of being a part of that and helping them tell their stories. There's a lot of camaraderie down there and it's an important mission and you come out of that that deployment with an incredible sense of self-worth and uh, accomplishment. You get a lot out of going down there to, uh, to broadcast to all those people. All of the equipment has been taken down and shipped off. But technology has allowed AFN to continue services to the Balkans from AFN headquarters in Frankfurt, Germany, and AFRTS headquarters at March Air Reserve Base in California. And so, nearly six years after providing live broadcasting in the Balkans and serving 11 different peacekeeping rotations, the most heavily armed radio station in the world signs off and closes its doors. Another remarkable chapter in military broadcast history. 8.59 on your Friday morning and good!